So, good afternoon. We are going to go on with Simon Araujo, who will talk of uh, uh, Acorado, Coleta, and uh, analysis, uh, gathering and analysis of the flow. Good afternoon. I'm Simon. I am a network analyzer in ASIO, and I'm going to talk about Acvorado. That's a software that collects and analyzes uh, flow. Here you have some of the items that we will discuss today. At the end, we will have five minutes for questions. Before I talk about the software itself, let me compare the monitoring uh, protocols that we have available in the market. Mm, the, uh, we have the NSMP that is well uh, disseminated. It does request uh, of the information for the client in a uh, preset uh, interval, and then we have the, the flows. The we uh, sending the flows uh, with uh, uh, sampling at all times. That information has uh, metadata of the packets. And today, it's much more difficult or a bit more difficult to implement it because there are just a few open source uh, um, possibilities for this analysis available. This would be the interface. This is the outbound traffic using SNMP protocol. We do not have specific information, as you may see as SPF or IP of destination, or the traffic, the outbound traffic. And that information is obtained when we use flow to monitor this interface. Here you have an example of a real traffic of an interface where showing the AS of a destination when the traffic leaves uh, the interface. And in that interface, of the previous uh, chart, I had to analyze the data because this is a production network. Now, today, there are several uh, commercial uh, solutions in the market. They uh, have their advantages. They can be configured uh, quickly and easily. They are very rich. They, they are full of resources. They do not tend to be inexpensive. They have quite a, a high added value. And they're not open source. Even in the elastic flow, it started as being open source, and now it's proprietary. Although you can analyze up to 4,000 flows per second, but you cannot scale it up much. We have several softwares, such as Kentic, that's very popular in our community. And uh, the, we also have other open source solutions, including Glo GoFlow 2, that's similar to GoFlow. And uh, this is a flow ingester. The, so it does part of the work uh, that it will bring it to you. Open source tools are free. They are flexible. You don't need uh, them to be assembled. You do need to uh, some expertise of the network operator to make them operate uh, together. Here, I'm go we're going to show some examples as a VFlow, that's an, the, the Edge software, and then another one that is the PMA CCT that uses several protocols and others that are used for big data analysis. I am going to discuss them in just a few minutes. Let's talk about Acvorado. Ac it does a net flow and IP fix and S flow, and it brings several classifications as geo IP, uh, IP classification, interface classification, site classification, and uh, it uh, achieves it and it can aggregate all that into the flow. All that is configured and, well, the pipeline uh, uses Kafka, ClickHouse, and uh, 
that is used by several companies. We manage to store a lot of data using very uh, little resources with SITTEC that has a, a graphic interface and one of the components that's called console. Uh, the way I understand it, this has many advantages because you don't need to understand how the Aquarius language as SQL, you can uh, search without a need to understand uh, queries language. So the main advantage is that it's free of charge. It's uh, open source. You don't need any specific uh, hardware. A virtual machine can do it. It performs very well. It was uh, developed in Go. It is scalable. And for network operators, it is very important that, to know that it has a rapid uh, initial deploy. In less than um, one minute, you can deploy it. And they already have uh, infrastructure with Kafka and House. If you already have the infrastructure, you can also do it using the home, the Helm chart that will facilitate the maintenance a lot. The, there are already several features, um, monitoring features. It's very easy to do. So how do, how do you deploy it? Well, you should visit the uh, GitHub repository. There you have it. Um, you uh, um, download uh, the the file, the Docker compose up. You have to read the documentation. Of course, this is not does not uh, exempt you from reading it. And then I'm going to give you a demo, and the demo is also available at the URL that you have there, github.com slash acuvorado slash dot net. The advantage is that um, it doesn't do the deployment of GitHub, GitHub, so you need to have either ClickHouse or K8. So this is a video that I, I, I had to accelerate it, um, for put it fast forward to show the deployment. I, I will um, download the file, I enter it, uh, I l see that in less than a minute the app is ready. You can manage the flow. <coughs> Board uh, 8080 is ready. That is the standard uh, port for console service. This is the front end of the app. You see that right uh, from the beginning, it gives you important data, such as the uh, share of IPv4 and IPv6 uh, uh, traffic, the traffic in general, the ports of origin, the uh, top source, uh, how many, uh, how much is exported to uh, the app. And a very interesting thing is that you can also see uh, of uh, the the raw of uh, the last uh, scene. You see that the raw has already been enriched with. Uh, um, with export standard, export site, these do not come by default. It depends on the classification of the interface and the connectivity of the interface the flow belongs to. And all that is reported by Aquarado. So in the visualization tab, you can select some charts here. I show you how to check the traffic of an interface that is classified as being external. Here we see exactly the ASS of origin that are bringing traffic to your networks classified as external. Basically the same filter. We go a bit beyond the filter to do uh, filtering through a specific provider. This information of the provider was added during the flow management. So it was enriched at that moment. We have another type of graph too. Here I changed the size to show you that you can have a different dimension. So you have different options in this uh, option with Aquorado. Here I put E-type 
which allows you to select other options that in terms of the dimensions. We also have a graph that shows the proportions. So you can select the different filters. Here we are applying the filters based on the external interface. Here we have connectivity, the source AS, and the source port. So we have several types. You can select whichever you wish. You can classify whichever way you wish. So depending on how you do the classification, whatever you select, you can decide among different options. Now, in terms of performance, this software was developed with free and these are some of the numbers that were published. In the production environment, this has a machine with one tera disk, 64 gigabytes RAM, and 24V CPU. So this is quite a considerable number of flows per second. You can have five years of data with a machine of this size. The data are summarized over time. The IPs and ports are removed. So AK Vorada maintains the ports for 15 days in order to waste storage space in ClickHouse. So you can configure this whichever way you wish. If you think you're wasting a lot of storage, this can be changed. You can even increase this if you need more storage time. Now, this configuration is very simple. This is an interval. It's very simple. And let me speak about the service in a couple of minutes. Now, in terms of performance, uh, Kubernetes, here I prepared a pod using Kubernetes. I entered a pod with 2,000 flows per second. 1,000 flows for net flows and 2,000 for S flows. Now, one of the same components of AK Borado is that it consumed 1.4 gigabits for that type of performance. We went from 3.3 to 0.4 CPO. We can see that the application has a great performance and is also scalable. What are the configurations? These are quite complex. Well, that is not at all the case. In order to implement this, you have to do a couple of things. By default, the composer brings a demo. <coughs> so it injects a couple of dummy facts as an example so you can better understand the tool. <coughs> so it's an out-of-the-box tool, but you have to eliminate that initial service. You, you have the Aquarado exporter. You, you can remove the demonstration following these steps. You have here demo exporter in Aquarado YML and Aquarado exporter in Docker Compose YML. You can also use a chat GPT to do the regular expressions. You can enter the standards, your own standards from your devices. And you can ask chat GPT to create this regular expression for you. Now, how is this classified? Some files are necessary, some, and some you have to change in the configuration. In the configuration, the mo one of the most important files is inlet.yaml. You use SNMP to use the the speed and so on. You have to configure SNMP. You have to use the regular expressions in interface classifiers and in exporter classifiers. Then there's another component, which is the routing BMP. For those who use NetFlow or others, this information might not be available in the flow. Normally, they are not available. So you have to add these in order to enrich the setup. AK Borado uses BMP to use data such as ANS path. 
And this is also to visualize the air's path from its traffic. Another interesting file is AK Borado YML, which allows you to configure the networks and use the names you wish. For example, we have ASNs, we would like to maintain a defined name together with a number of ASNs and static names. That is possible in addition to creating the networks. You can also have subnetworks with well-defined scopes. And so there are a whole set of things that you can define and the roles so that afterwards you can apply filters and study the traffic. So this is great to visualize traffic. Now, generally, it is interesting to configure a Docker Composer file. You can create an environment, for example, the account ID. And Ecobot Island until this version 7.0, they used a geolocation service. Now, as from the point zero version, this is no longer necessary. So now they offer a key for geolocation. So now this has become optional. So unless you are using previous versions, then it is mandatory. So I configured everything now, and even so, I still have problems. So I would recommend to do a to see the documentation that explains the configuration that does include several features. So you have a section on configuration for the documentation, and then we have another session that deals with troubleshooting. Now, there are several cases of problems that were already solved by the community itself. So there are lots and lots of details. So I do encourage you to visit these links when you do the implementation. Regarding the function of AK Borado, it has three main services. The first one is the inlet, which I already explained. It receives the flow, it enriches the flow, and then sends it to the Kafka. But it doesn't only do that. It also has the SMP pools, it obtains the data and the data from devices and does queries to the GMP database. It enriches the logs of the SNMP, it adds the BGP data, and then does the classification. So all these logs are then submitted to the CAFRA once they are almost enriched. It also has a console with a graphic interface. Then it also has the orchestrator. The orchestrator validates Kafka's configuration, a click house. When we configure the, the, the orchestrator is in charge of click house and configures the tables and maintains the tables updated so you can conduct your queries. So that AK Borado works, it depends on several open source projects. Some of the main important ones are GoFlow2, then the inlet for log management is based on GoFlow2. And then there are several other projects that are also interesting. These are all open source, all of them. So if you wish to do scraping, you have Cobra, which is a CDI with all the applications and a graphic uh, interface. And then the project as a whole, which is the Apache Kafka ClickHouse. So some people need to have support, monitor the monitoring option. So this can be used using the Prometheus. And I will explaining this later on. You can also use Helm and Grafana dashboard. This has already been included in the template. And together with that template, we have a link of Grafana to make the imports of all the graphics that you wish to use to check the performance of this application. 
regarding the main metrics, you have important metrics, for example, to see flow errors and the details. So you can see the flow received by exporter or by router or by switch. So you'll see a large number of flows received, which are then sent to Kafka. Then the net flow is decoded by type. And in the case of NetFlow and in the SFlow, you have the type and the subtype and traffic in general. I'm not going to measure every single metric because these are quite a number, but many are related to GeoIP or to Kafka or to routing. So this will facilitate things when you implement this application. So here, you can see that you can still have a DDoS attack session with a Borado. The flow can be consumed very rapidly within a couple of seconds. You can consume these in the click house and you can detect DDoS attacks. Now, unfortunately, the console doesn't have a resource that can allow us to do searches of this kind. But we managed to enter ClickHouse and do this manually. Or also, if you have knowledge on programming in Python or others, you can apply this to mitigate DDoS attacks. Now, this example of a query in ClickHouse, we managed to see all the traffic of more than 50 IP origins of more than 200 megas of destination IP, origin port, and number of flows, uh, sources, countries, and so on. So this means that this is an attack. So this is what I wanted to share with you. Thank you very much for your time, and I'm happy to take any questions. Congratulations on your presentation. That was great. I have a question regarding the deploy on the horizontal scale, because the computing efforts for flow analysis are always an issue. From what I understood, in addition to the computing efforts, you have the inlets. Is that so? Well, one of the other problems that is quite difficult is well, in general, we're not going to speak about all the things that you have to put up into the cloud and your problems because of the NAT and so on. So can you imagine a scenario in which, for, ex for example, with a smaller computing resource where you do low-level processing in terms of computing, so and then send that to Kafka. Is that possible? Can you do horizontal distribution? Yes, you can do the deployment in AK Vorado. You own it in very limited resources, and you can do this remotely with Kafka ClickHouse. Thank you very much. Great, very interesting. Thank you very much. Leonardo Sibon. Well, you gave, you presented an idea of a platform, the type of machines that would uh, support uh, many flows. But in everyday work, what kind of uh, software could the uh, provider think of as something useful that could be of use? Thinking of a medium-sized or a small uh, provider, what kind of hardware could you start uh, using with for this solution? Well, that's a very interesting question. Yes, small and medium-sized um, uh, IP that with little traffic. Acuverado uses uh, little resources. The console and the orchestrator itself, you're going to see that the footprint of the memory and the CPU is very low. It's even ridiculous. The console, 256 megas RAM, 512 of RAM, and uh, a very little CPU. That is the resources. The most intensive part is the data pipeline that is 
is the kick house. So I think that if you have a, a machine with 32 gigas of RAM and uh, 500 uh, uh, of uh, disk space, I think that's enough if you want to get started uh, with a very interesting implementation. I think that's all. Thank you for your time.